Uh, thank you very much for coming. I feel uh, blessed to be in this situation, blessed that so many familiar and in some cases unfamiliar faces decided to spend some time on a Monday night with me uh, talking about what is what I know is a rather controversial subject and a somewhat controversial book about a very controversial figure and a controversial statement. Um, what I'm going to try to do um, today, since I had a little bit of time between my office hours and uh, the time I was getting ready to go home, I wrote some thoughts down uh, to at least allow you to think about the day, um, which is in a lot of ways a big day for Imus in the Morning, the show that uh, Don Imus oversees, and also a big day in a lot of ways for this book. And I want to give you some sense of what's going on before I go specifically into the discussion of the book itself, uh, although the comments, hopefully, that I use to preface these um, formulations will be connected enough to the book itself that you'll have a sense of that. And then I just want to try a, a little bit. I, I mean, I have a lot of passages marked to read. I'll probably read a two, one or two of them, and then in about half an hour or so, throw, them up, throw this discussion open through two questions and answers. And I ask you to ask me the hardest and most difficult questions you can think of, but to ask them gently. <laughs> uh, and I will try to answer them in kind. If you want to throw things at me or hit me with anything, I promise you that um, I have a few objects up here that I can throw back at you. Um, it's wonderful to be in this bookstore, which I love a lot. And I, was, and I had this strange experience. I figure I'll tell you about it in order to start this. I was eating lunch. Uh, I got lunch from a Chinese restaurant today. And I got a fortune cookie. Um, and usually I don't really pay much attention to fortune cookies, but I got one that said, you will be the guest of a gracious host. And it seemed to me to be important and uh, useful to read that. Uh, this bookstore is a bookstore that my daughters and I used to come to quite frequently, and I love it here, and I'm glad that this event is here. Um, in a lot of ways, it's been a long, strange day. Um, I got up this morning about 6 o'clock, and I walked my dog. And I got up so early because I knew Imus in the Morning was going to be featured for the first time on Fox Business Network, or FBN, which I'd never heard of before two or three or four weeks ago. Um, and I wanted to watch it because I, it I figured I was going to come here and talk to you about this book. And it seemed important to watch it. And also, it was part of one of my daily rituals for a long, long time, uh, to wake up too early in the morning. Uh, and turn on the television and be provoked and uh, inspired and at the very least learn a great deal about the world by watching I Miss in the Morning. Um, to say that I'm a fan is probably true, and I'm also a critic in all sorts of ways of the show in ways that hopefully will come through too, but it's a show that I enjoy and I find entertaining. Well, this morning as I woke up uh, and turned on the television, there was an announcement as, you know, the, the, the teaser, and it said that Deborah Dickerson was going to be on his show. And part of what was interesting about that is that at least one of the reasons it was interesting to me is that she was one of the people who wrote a blurb for my book. And she is a black intellectual and writer, and a black woman, obviously, and I thought it was savvy for him in a lot of ways to choose a black woman as his first guest, given the fact that he got thrown off of the air, given the fact that he lost his job, largely because he had insulted black women. Um, and it seemed to me both to be politically savvy, but also to reflect a transformation in the show itself, from a show that was in a lot of ways largely focused on and driven by a sort of white male humor. Um, and perhaps what I mean by that will come across in a second. And I think he was trying to signal in a variety of ways the importance of what he had learned and what he had experienced as a consequence of his going into the desert, as it were, because of the comments that he made, because he was fired, because he was ostracized and excommunicated and uh, excoriated by 
people all over America and throughout the galaxy because of the <laughs> phrase that he had mentioned, nappy-headed hoes. Um, and this was his emergence or reemergence on the national scene in a big way. He had been, at least with regard to television, on this station called RFD, which I had never heard of, but which I suspect, uh, I know it's connected to country something or rodeo something. My sense is that what they primarily do is have tractor pulls on the show, but I may be wrong about that. Uh, and so you saw him moving from that particular stage, that particular small cable or, or satellite venue to a major network, uh, or at least a, a slightly major cable network that was hoping that he could, because of his influence and reach, m put them on the cable network map in ways that it hadn't been. They were trying to compete with CNBC and it wasn't working. So they chose him to anchor the morning show. Um, and I thought given his reemergence in the culture, given the fact that he had become reestablished as somebody who was at the very least prominent again, but although I would argue not prominent in ways that he had been before. Um, before his demise, he was quoted in Newsweek and Time and people from Newsweek came on his show and Time Magazine came on his show and people from NBC came on his show. Tom Brokaw was on his show. Everybody who was of any significant importance in the major media was at the very least uh, not everybody, but a lot of people were on uh, his show. And that wasn't necessarily the case uh, following his, uh, following the controversy connected to to um, his utterance of the word nappy-headed, the words nappy-headed hoes. Um, and part of the reason that Deborah Dickerson as a figure was interesting was because, I mean, she's written a lot of, uh, controversial and interesting columns for a lot of different uh, journals and magazines and written a couple books that were interesting and influential but I f became aware of her at least with regard to the I'm in the morning controversy because of something she wrote in Time magazine. She talked about the fact that and I'm going to read this because I'm not going to remember it specifically um, that Imus's remarks had left her, quote unquote, deeply, deeply hurt because they, quote, target the most, the greatest vulnerability of black women, our non-European looks with the express purpose of reminding us that we are not and can never be beautiful. So part of what happened in the transformation of Deborah Dickerson, at least views of the Amis in the morning, is that she went from being almost the ultimate outsider, the person who was the butt of the jokes or who assumed that she was the butt of the jokes, to being a person that Imus has called on now quite frequently as a guest and who he chose as his first guest on his national television uh, broadcast and the symbolic and other implications of that seem to me are are interesting and important um, and part of the reason I was interested in her being on there was quite frankly I thought somebody was going to mention my book um, and she called my book on the blurb the book not only the book America needed it was the book America didn't know it needed um, and my wife and I, I woke my wife up or she was already awoke because she heard me laughing at Imus in the morning and she was trying to figure out what was going on with me. And we went downstairs to watch Deborah Dickerson's appearance and my book was mentioned on the show, sort of. Um, Don Imus asked Deborah Dickerson if she knew that, and this is I think a direct quote, that book by that guy about me that she shared a manuscript version of with him was out. So he wanted to know if she, she knew that that book by me was out. And she told her that two members of his staff had read the book, that he hadn't been able to read the book or wasn't interested in read the, reading the book. And he insisted that despite her protest, protestations, she kept saying, it's an interesting book, it's a good book, you should read it, you'll, you'll like the book. He said that he didn't find much value in it. 